So that is how this, po uh, this prayer came to our hands. Once again we will read, O oh Lord, I have nothing to ask of you. I am blessed with all that one can hope for, ask for. I have a mind to think. It is thy glory. Because the, if the mind is not there, how will I know all these things? Whatever we read, whatever we see, whatever we hear, it has got to be registered, you know? It's a powerful tool. I have a mind to think, it is thy glory. I have eyes to see, ears to hear, all these are thy glory. I have in front of me a world so vast and so variegated, enough for me to express myself. Again it is thy glory. I can make, I can unmake. All these possibilities are again thy glory. I can even make this prayer to you. This capacity to appreciate you is again thy glory. I seek from thee nothing. For, because you have given me everything. Inside me, outside me, your presence is something that I cannot miss. I don't want to miss. Let thy grace be upon me, not to gain anything new, but to make me see thy glory. In all my achievements, in all my capacities, let me see thy glory. O Lord, I have nothing to ask of you. We have been, uh, ah, now we will go to that, uh, a few boats. As announced yesterday, there are 30 boats now displayed right from the place where Puja Madhaji Samadhi starts. It goes on like this and then comes back at the bookstore. It is Mangalore to Mangalore. Parampuja Papa started his yatra from Mangalore on 27th December. 1922 and after seven eight months he came back to Bangalore Ma Mangalore we may not be able to remember the entire text the in-depth study has revealed so many points but even then it was felt that each and every place what is it that Papa wanted to convey to us? No? Forget about what had happened there or something. What exactly does he want to convey to us? Then it doesn't become an academic exercise or a reading exercise. Out of these 30 quotations, probably a few may remain with us or we may get the inner alignment may take place. Today also morning somebody came and said, I was looking for certain answers, but this particular board opened up so many things. So the process, you know, it helps. A few boards we will read. Vital Rao, as beloved Papa Swami Ramdas was known before uh, embracing sannyas, was struggling in the whirlpool of worldly life, 
until he was lifted up by the indwelling infinite power. He felt that he was called by the divine to leave his cocooned life of severe limits and fling himself into the vast open sky of limitless infinite, infinity. This was his first journey as a mendicant, traversing from the deep south to the far north, entirely relying on the indwelling reality alone, every day, every step, every breath. Then the road map, next road comes. In India, how he started going. It is, it is coming there? Mom. Then Mangalore. Papa Swami Ramdas's endless struggles in his mundane life, resulting in utter helplessness, led this advent into the world as a mendicant. He heard the inner voice of God when he cried, you know. It was like a plank thrown towards a man struggling for very life in the stormy waves of a raging sea. On 27th December 1922, at 5 o'clock in the morning, he left Mangalore by train by bidding farewell to a world for which he had lost all attractions and in which he could find nothing to call his own. The body, the mind, the soul, all were laid at the feet of God. On 27th December 1922, at 5 o'clock in the morning, he left Mangalore by train by bidding farewell to a world for which he had lost all attraction and in which he could find nothing to call his own. The body, the mind, the soul, all were laid at the feet of God. And here Papa's quotation. A seeker's likes and dislikes favors and prejudices, set up a thick wall on his, on his path, he should fling himself into the infinite life. Elsewhere he says, we have been preparing, preparing, preparing. But we should uh, take the leap, you know. Fling, you know, a seeker's likes and dislikes, favors and prejudices, set up a thick wall on his path. He should fling himself into the infinite life. And from Sri Rangam, or sorry, from Mangalore, he moved to Sri Rangam. Not that he moved, he was made to move, because he had no idea. There is a station called E Road. Morning 5 o'clock, the train took him and left him. He got down at uh, E Road, did not know what to do. So somebody asked him in the station, where are you going? He said, who knows? Ram knows. Then he said, I am going to Trichy in the night train. So he accompanied him up to Trichy. From Trichy, he was prompted to go to Srirangam by walk. Passing through E Road and Trichy, Papa was guided to the banks of Kaveri, where he renounced all that he was holding dearly, including his name, Vital Rao. For him, sannyas was like being lifted by the divine from the narrow pond of a worldly life, thrown into the extensive ocean of a universal life. This is his definition about sannyas. For him, sannyas was like being lifted by the divine from the narrow pond of a worldly life and thrown into the extensive ocean of a universal life. Papa says, sannyas is a dedication of our entire being to the Lord and his service. It is a spontaneous wave of aspiration rising from 
within our own heart. Sanyas is a dedication of our entire being, entire being to the Lord and His service. It is a spontaneous wave of aspiration rising from within our own heart. Because when he was prompted to take sannyas, when he went to the, what is the place? Srirangam, Amma, Amma, eh? Amma Mantapam, correct, Amma Mantapam. So there immediately he offered the white clothes to the mother Kaveri, put on the yellow and took three woes. The first woe This life will be fully, entirely consecrated to, very important word, the meditation of and the service of Ram. It is not only a meditation inside, in the inward journey, but it is also serving his creation, outside. Meditation of Ram inside, Service of Ram outside. Second was, you would see the entire women folk as his mother. Third one was, he would purely live upon arms procured by Bhiksha. This life be henceforth entirely consecrated to meditation and the service of Sri Ram. It was not withdrawing from any field of activities. Only the self-interest is removed, that's all. Self-interest in any form, no, it is removed. Strict celibacy be observed looking upon all women as mothers. The body be maintained and fed upon the food procured by Bhiksha or on what was offered as alms. So sannyas is a dedication of our entire being to the Lord and service. And His service. It is a spontaneous wave of aspiration rising from within our own heart. Rameshwaram, no? Throwing himself entirely at the feet of God, Papa travelled wherever he was guided to with an empty pocket, just two clothes and a few books, all his possession in the world. Huddles did not hold him back. He managed to find something positive in every experience where others found prickly thorns, he saw fragrant roses. Papa's words, optimism leads you Godward, while pessimism pushes you down into the morass of skepticism, despair and woe. Optimism leads you Godward, while pessimism pushes you down into the morass of skepticism, despair and woe. No. Kya go away? Yeah, I put back. Reverse the word. Madhurai. Gear maray. Madurai, as his one and only guide and guru, guardian led him further, he saw many wonders of art and architecture. But behind every carved stone and beneath every masterpiece, he found the signature of his master. Every towering structure showed him 
the splendor of glory, glory of the Creator. When we go to temple, we hardly notice all these things, you know. As his one and only guide, as his one and only guide and guardian, led him further, he saw many wonders of art and architecture. But behind every carved stone and beneath every masterpiece, he found the signature of his master. Every towering structure showed him the splendorous glory of the Creator. We also see and we appreciate that's all. We hardly think about the creative power in that person. No? Be, so here, another quotation. Be the light unto yourself and in your own original way manifest the magnificent and, magnificence and power of your enlightened life. Be highly creative. Set free the infinite power that is within you. Be the light unto yourself and in your own original way manifest the magnificence and power of your enlightened life. Be highly creative and set free the infinite power that is within you. Every day we will cover three or four. So today we have covered Hmm? How many? Three. Madurai, Rameshwaram, Sri Rangam. Eh? One more we can say. Okay. Chidambaram. His path was often paved with hurdles. But with no grumbling or mumbling, he went on. Embracing every situation cheerfully at unexpected corners, he found the generous providence of God. He did ex as exactly as he was prompted to. At the same time, whenever things did not happen as expected, he took even the non-fulfillment as his will and wish. A very important point for all of us, you know. We pray for some remedy, you know. The fulfillment and the non-fulfillment. If we are in a position to accept both with the same mind. That's what his life says. Not merely the, the prompting comes. That is also from with him. He makes him to go there. But there is a non-fulfillment of that prompting. He accepts that also as his will. So no grumblings, no complaints. In another incident, he walked 32 kilometers, you know, 20 miles. Morning he started, reached there by noon with no chapel. Extreme summer. And then he wanted to have the darshan of Aravindo. Then he was told, Aravindo has gone on silence for one year. Nobody can see him. Even that, you know, how cheerfully. Later on in one of the uh, stations, you know, Ajumir, when he was driven out by the railway police, finally he spotted a place under a tree and there is nothing for him to lie down, excepting his own bare body. So when he lie down on the mother earth, he could smell the urine there. That also without any aversion. He was able to see the finger of God behind that. There are so many. So probably by reading it, by assimilating it, by absorbing it, we might be able to move one inch towards that state, you know. His path was often paved with huddles, but with no grumbling or mumbling, he went on, embracing every situation cheerfully. At unexpected corners, he found the generous providence of God. He did as exactly as he was prompted to. At the same time, whenever things did not happen as expected, he took even the non-fulfillment as, as, his, as his will and wish. Papa says, life must flow spontaneously like a river. 
whatever act you do will in this condition be utterly divine spontaneously like a river without any prefix suffix expectations bah. don't have any misgivings or doubts push on until the great truth within you reveal itself in all its glory through every part of your being life must flow spontaneously like a river whatever act you do will in this condition be utterly divine don't have any misgivings or doubts push on until the great truth within you reveals itself in all its glory through every part of your being so like that every day we will try to cover four or five boats and in the meantime we request all of you to kindly see the board in its place and whenever you find there is an inner alignment note it down mobiles are there you can take a photograph and so that you will be able to pass it on to those who have not been able to come here Yeah. Yeah. Ah, guru sudhi eta. Ange daily life sadhana unde pe namlo special. Ange ah yele yele. So when we started the uh, can you get me the vanda 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 i don't need when we started the digging deep we were able to find out 198 points and which cannot be shared no in any platform will be difficult so then what be the quintessence of those points they have been condensed or filtered so it was brought to 23 we'll first go through the entire one so that something may remain with us go to the source of all sources the great void number 2 subservience to a higher power a means to erase the me and mine number 3 constant dialogue with him number 4 whenever free from duties meditate and utter his name be the period ever so small number 5 resorting to periodical solitude and to observing silence aid in curbing the outgoing tendencies of the mind prayer can you show that it is there in stress stress a uh, stress tool and last page our sign sign post and mail stone at the last page no no it has to be connected to the it is there no in the here it is there anyway let them let them try to bring it we will read so prayer becomes most effective when it is self originated tripod of sadhana fixed resolve sustained faith optimistic outlook of these three an optimistic outlook is more important number 9 depend exclusively on inner guidance 
Ten, self-imposed disciplines ensure progress. Eleven, maintain equanimity in all conditions. Twelve, throw ourselves entirely at his mercy with nothing to fall back upon excepting him. Thirteen, accept every situation cheerfully, treating it as ordained by God. Fourteen, develop a positive attitude at all times, including adverse and trying circumstances. Fifteen, real contentment is the outcome of a dedicated life, free from grumblings and complaints. Sadhu, you can take this. No, no, no. You can take this. Delete it. I don't know where you have kept. Stress, stress to control end. Number 13, accept every situation, develop a positive attitude, real contentment, okay. Number 16, as far as possible, try to be in a spiritually conducive atmosphere. Number 17, although our life and all its ingredients are transient, it does not mean that they are insignificant in any sense. All events and individuals have a purpose in the grand scheme of things. Nothing is irrelevant, nothing is unimportant, nothing is insignificant. Pray to the Creator to help us remain steadfast in our commitment to remember Him in all actions and see Him in all of His manifestation. Becoming aware of His grace enables us to do sadhana perseveringly, knowing that he is the activating principle behind all events and individuals, including sadhana. Become aware that personal, impersonal, saguna, nirguna, all have relevance in spirituality. Personal means deities, mahatmas, bhaktotamas. Impersonal, the indwelling spirit. Saguna, attributes such as love, compassion, kindness. Nirguna, beyond attributes such as stillness, silence, witness consciousness. 22. Steps in the spiritual journey. Bhakti is the root. Vairagya is the trunk. Jnana is the flower. Parabhakti is the fruit. Bhakti means devotion to God. Vairagya means withdrawal from the outer to the inner. Jnana, feeling the presence of the Atman within. Parabhakti, feeling the whole universe, including us, provided by Him only. Tests come unawares. May He enable us to experience the zenith of spirituality, peace and serenity at the inner level, and absence of otherness love at the outer level. So these are the uh, 23 points. You are showing it? You are showing so go to the source of all sources. The first chapter, Papa, brings the word, the great void. He was, uh, during his struggling days, among the various books he read, Yoga Vasishta was also there. in which we could find this word in Swami Vengadeshananda he has written in two volumes. In that we were able to find out this word, great void. How, only for, for one time he has used. He heard, you know, when he cried, he heard from the great void. Initially we were reading it. 
but we were not applying our mind intently. Then only, and Mataji had also elaborately discussed about it. Can you give me this thing? And Mataji put it in a simple form, though it is a very, very, very complex word, Mahashunyam. We were extremely finding it difficult to translate it. Great word. Mahashunyam, so many things, you know, but still we, it, it cannot con convey anything. Mataji puts it in a beautiful way. That is, ah, very good. Mataji's words, probably we might be able to understand it. Papa wanted me to look upon the Guru as the omnipresent, omniscient, nirguna, nirvigar being. Papa taught me that Guru was as vast, limitless, formless as the emptiness all around me. You pour water into the emptiness, it will not get wet. You set fire to it, it will not burn. Such a universal one is the Guru, call him Papa or God. You must know who God is, Papa is. He is Nirguna, Nirakara, Shashwata, all-pervading existence. You can get some idea of Papa's God Swaru if you stand on an open ground and look at the sky. The space where there is nothing between the earth and the sky can give you an insight into God's all-pervading existence beyond all names and forms. Though his uh, Nirguna Roop, Swaroop cannot be compared to anything, to give you some idea, I would say that it is like the vacant space between us which is all-pervading. He cannot enjoy his bliss as Nirguna, but he will, he should enjoy it. And in order to do so, he projected himself as the entire universe and the multitudinous beings and creatures in it. As the indwelling reality, God guides himself and therefore all are not aware of his existence in them. In order to make them aware of it and to reveal himself in their hearts, our Sadhguru Papa came in a human form to guide them. It is possible to guide human beings only through a human form. Therefore, the Guru, the Supreme Lord, comes in a human form to teach and guide humanity. In the beginning, Mataji said, there was only a vast, limitless, empty space, a great void. This void represented God's transcendental, eternal being. Such a being we had to realize within ourselves. Just as we could have an idea of what a man or an object was, like by the shadow it cast on the earth. Likewise, she was mentioning the void as representing him, that he was like the infinite space we could see all around us when we were flying in the plane. In actuality, Mataji said, he was all this and far, far beyond. So what she was telling us was merely an approximity to reality, like the shadow was to the man. Now I shall explain to you what sort of sadhana our beloved Purushottam Papa had prescribed for me. He gave me the name, name of God, the name of the Supreme Being. He asked me to keep the mind contemplating on Him, who is the Supreme Being transcending everything, who has become everything, who is dwelling in our hearts, and asked me to pray to Him, to reveal Himself in my heart. He further instructed me to do whatever work that came to me as service to Him. God's eternal being <coughs> that we have to attain is one of his emptiness, utter emptiness. 
total void like the vacant space around us if we are to attain such a void we should also become thoroughly empty within that is to say there should not be the least vestige of deha abhiman in us only then we can attain papas shashwata swarup until and unless our deha abhiman goes completely until the least trace of it disappears altogether god cannot reveal himself in us god's real nature real swabhava is nirguna nirvigara swarup nameless formless static void aspect such a supreme being who fills all space came in a human form in order to enjoy his own bliss it is like enclosing the emptiness that is all around you within the confines of a small container take away the enclosure what is left only emptiness again like that you know she keeps on explaining about it so we come from where that inquiry ultimately we have to when we say all the knowables are removed you no know, emptiness means not that it is empty but it is it, all the knowables are removed and what remains cannot be explained we will find that in uh, on 27 we will have that uh, silence you know where uh, papa and gurudev swami shivanji maharaj they talk about silence so how can we explain silence similarly how, how can we explain about great void but ultimately when we keep on going within we have been promised or assured by them that the thinking the way, the, the, the 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 medium which is called thoughts the mind mind gets dissolved in the in the static state then nobody is there to explain anything so whatever knowables we have the moment the mind becomes active the list of knowables pervade everywhere when we remove all these things and exclusively when we concentrate on the inward journey that is why this nama chanting papa prescribes me- mental chanting he prescribes is far more effective than vocal and silent because in mental chanting we should know that we are chanting and the knowing <clears throat> that means the stage comes when we know that we are chanting then we are trying to find out who is knowing and who is chanting at that particular fraction of a second the chanting stops again some other thoughts come so we again take to chanting and papa says the gap between one chanting and another it has to be lengthened by practice <clears throat> om shri ram jay ram jay jay ram om shri ram jay ram jay jay ram so in between no then what what we experience is named as great void that is the source in which we all exist so that is how papa brings the word great void and later on he named it as ram and ram has been explained exhaustively in the first article before the first chapter so among the uh, quintessence go to the source of all sources elsewhere papa says go to your own source and the source of the world we are born to our parents we thought previously they are the source then we understand now that they are only the instrumental cause you know because they were also born to their parents they were also also born to another parent so the, uh, the, the we can remember at least one or two or three no more than that no the intellect cannot reach so the original source we cannot reach so we then go to the sources or mahatmas and bhagavad gita says bijam maam sarvabhutanam 
for I am the eternal seed. There are, uh, in Bhagavad Gita, there are four slogas which keeps on emphasizing about this aspect. Number 15, Bhagavad Gita, 15th sloga. Sarvasya jaham hridisanni vishto matas mrudityanam apohanam ja vedaishya sarvair ahameva vedyo vedanta gridveda videva jaham. I am seated in the hearts of all living beings and from me come memory, knowledge as well as forgetfulness. I alone am to be known by all the Vedas. I am the author of the Veda and the knower and the meaning of the Vedas. Bijam Maam, chapter number 7, sloga number 10. Bijam Maam Sarva Bhutanam, Vidhi Partha Sanatanam, Buddhir Buddhi Matamasmi, Tejas Tejas Finavaham. O Arjuna, know that I am the eternal seed of all beings. I am the intellect of the intelligent, the splendor of the glorious. In chapter 9, again a sloga 18. Gadir Bhartha Prabhu Sakshi Nivasam Sharanam Suhrid. Prabhava pralayam sthanam nidanam bijam avyayam. I am the supreme goal of all living beings and I am also their sustainer, master, witness, which were not known to us till then. Abode, shelter, friend. I am the origin, end, resting place of the creation. I am the repository and eternal seed. In chapter number 10, again sloga number 39. Yachavi Sarva Bhutanam Bijam Tadaham Arjuna Natadasti Vina Yasyat Maya Bhutam Charajaram. I am the generating seed of all living beings. O Arjuna, no creature moving or non moving can exist without me. <laughs> Again, chapter number 14, sloga number 3. Sarvayu Nishu Kaunteya Murtaya Sambavandiya Tasam Brahma Mahadhuni. Aham Bija Pradapidaha. He says it should be understood that all species of life, O son of Kunti, are made possible by birth in this material nature and that I am the seed giving father. And then in chapter number 14, Mamayunir Mahad Brahma Tasmin Garbam Dadamyaham Sambhava Sarvabhutanam Tato Bhavati Bharata. My womb is the real Brahman. In it, I place the seed. From that, O Bharata, is the birth of all beings. So we all owe our origin to God. No? We have forgotten this connection and feel that our sense of individuality with body, mind, intellect is the starting point of our life. So Papa wants us to go back to this. That is why he said great void. By bringing great void, he touched and kindled all these vital aspects in us. And when once we are convinced about this, that we owe our origin to him, the next stage is trying to become subservience. Because still the sense of individuality will arrogate. Because it has not been trained. It has been asserting all these years its relevance, its power. So it's very difficult to tame it. So to erase Subservience to higher power. Just now we read that uh, thy glory. Only by 
dwelling on his glory apar mahima probably we may be able to reduce the dominance of me and mine everything has come from him everything has come from him what is it that i can we fail we forget now the hearing is there we have understood intellectually we are 100% convinced about it but when it comes to the actuality we find it difficult to implement it so here papa says constantly hammer this and for this he wanted us to have constant dialogue with him throughout this inquest of god you will find this constant dialogue even if it is for 5 minutes 1 minute 2 minute because the constant dialogue he had elsewhere said there are four steps in spirituality spiritual journey one is the nearness feeling the nearness second is feeling his presence within third is feeling one with him oh, sorry feeling uh, feeling the same in everybody and the last is feeling one with him samipyam sanidyam vyapanam yekatvam so the the first in order to step into the first step nearness i must develop a dialogue with him you know <clears throat> you i have now intellectually understood that you have given me this human birth you have been providing right from the moment of the seed level to this level you have been providing i am my intellect is 100% convinced about it but you did not give train my mind and you made the mind to arrogate itself and for that it has gathered so many so many points to justify its existence i am unable to get myself freed from it please enable me to free myself something like this he wants papa wants all of us to have a dialogue every day in our own language in our own language means we don't mean the language you know in our own way whatever is possible in whatever way it is possible we try to feel his presence within within and that is why he said whenever free from duties meditate and utter his name be the period ever so small even while we are waiting in the bus stand even while there is a pause moment in reading even while we are traveling to the office even while we are taking our bath even when you are walking or washing the clothes or washing there will be some pause moments papa wanted us once all of us to make use of that one second two second three second five seconds to remember him he says that's what he was doing in the first chapter you will find this word be the period ever so small whenever free from duties meditate and utter his name be the period ever so small and then uh, to develop this he resorted to solitude in tiruvannamale after the darshan of uh, bhagwan he came back and he told his friend who took him to bhagwan ramdas would like to spend in solitude then uh, uh, on that hill uh, almara guha you know it is still there it was located even today we find it difficult to go inside there he was there for 21 days only for bhiksha he used to come and then get back immediately so the, he was going through it. so then he makes us to think that in with all our preoccupations we should find some some ways or means by which we withdraw ourselves from our present field of activities even if it is for one hour or one day in a week or one day in fortnight something like that we devise our own method but we have to be draw then only all these things can be repeatedly gone through rest of the points we will take up because in one go if we do that we may not remember so the first one needs to remember our source second one is subservience to god mm-hmm. 
डायलॉग देन सॉलिट्यूड इफ दीज लाइक दैट यू नो सपोज वी सो सोर्स फॉर एनीथिंग वी ट्राई टू डेवलप दिस द प्रॉबिंग नेचर इज यूज फॉर गोइंग टू द सोर्स the mic which we are using you know when there was no mic how you made somebody to think about that a sound can be amplified through this gad this equipments you know it was a fresh there was no one when there was no amplifier at all you know? when there was no specs he made somebody to think about specs when there was no chair he made somebody to think about when there was no pandal there was no structure when there was no language like that we keep on identifying so then we go to the source this is what he wanted source source you are source as well as the source of the world whatever we see outside so the uh, that we have to keep on having then then we come to know that it is the power who has provided that power has provided everything that we call it as a creature comfort or the basic needs of our existence and then third one is constant dialogue with him we somehow these are all practical hints you know spirituality should become a part of our life so when we say that in quest of god is a is a what do you call it manual manual for life how does it become a manual 37 chapters give us this 198 tools that we carry it in our memory whenever there is a need we take that particular tool and try with that no if we are not in a position to carry so much load at least let us carry this 23 so that it will help us that was the purpose for which now we know that he initiated us into this in depth study and whenever we can say that we are preoccupied with so many things family profession society you know so many so many things so how am i to do it then papa answers even the period ever so small and as a matter of discipline somehow receding from the intense activity or what you call withdrawal from the field it is a must periodical that will make us to evaluate that will know where which are the areas we have to improve and uh, on that particular day we can draw our own uh, routine suiting to our equipment certain people may not be able to sit certain people may not be able to walk you know there, there are so many things are there certain people may be able to fast certain people may not be able to fast so whatever that uh, okay that is okay for our equipment we choose a, a a a routine daily routine and then make use of that withdrawal period to plunge more and more deep into the origin this is what papa papa did all these things how did he do that withdrawal everything has been explained we will not be able to do that absolutely ruled out but still we can try in a simple way so one more thing we would like to share with you all eh ah when was it then then it is been it sitting at the feet of ramdas this book has been compiled by devotees of mother hamilton David Yoga Jaya David ji used to come here regularly and uh, mother also has come and visited here during papa's time and during papa's visit to united states in 54 papa spent some time and after that after that they came here and spent some time so the devotees have taken pains you know. their labor of love has come out in the form of sitting at the feet of ramdas from writings of swami ramdas mother hamilton and puja swami sachidanand ji so it covers we have not been able to cover the whole thing 
but there are many portions in the gospel where papa was sharing with mother mother was sharing and so this would be very very useful for all spiritual aspirants this book is available they wanted to give free to everybody so those who would like to have it may kindly get it from Larry Carl and Ketama Ketama has gone. Ah, she is coming. She is coming. She is coming. Uh, we will just read out one small portion. Mother Hamilton was an American saint whose life was changed when she met beloved Papa in Seattle in 1954, while he was on his world tour. Mother first met Papa in the hotel where he was staying. and later he came to her home to give a talk to the spiritual group she led it was a blissful time in 1957 mother and her husband ralph sold all they had came to sit at the feet of papa at ananda ashram for several months where she underwent profound spiritual experiences mother returned to india and anand and uh, mother returned to india and ananda ashram two other times in 1967 and in 1977 papa recently prompted her devotees to compile a book entitled sitting at the feet of ramdas which covers the divine relationship between mother and papa they wanted to bring together all the material about the subject in one book and extracted material from world is god papa's book ramdas speaks the vision magazine gospel of swami ramdas as well as some of mother's letters from ananda ashram the devotees are thrilled to have the book printed in celebration of papa's sanyas centenary today is christmas day and also mother hamilton's birthday and so her devotees would like to pass out the book as prasad to those who have an interest in it lari will pass out to the gents and kate on the lady side so they are sitting there anybody can gents can go from uh, there later later and they can get the book it will be a wonderful inspiring book especially when we have the background of papa applied spirituality param pooja swami chidan ji maharaj me explains about daily life and daily sadhana then only you know it becomes otherwise you know in malayalam we say or tamil we say ellum pacharshim it will not go together we hear we go to ashrams we go to temples we hear discourses we read books but our life in, in our day to day life is entirely different there is no connection so this has been brought out beautifully by swami ji maharaj he says you know both are necessary daily life is an opportunity provided for us to exercise the spiritual dimensions gained during our inner studies reflection japa and meditation it is the testing ground daily life is the testing ground so that each day our progress is really ours we have made it our own by having tested it proven it possessed it beautiful until it has been tested and proven it is not our own it does not become part of us if we look at ourselves we will find that we have heard so many things you know we have read so many things but it has not become part of us because the effort to 
harmonize it with our daily life, you know. Integrate with our life. Swamiji gives importance. Today, Swamiji morning was giving us some points, you know. Anybody can say one point? Gone. <laughs> He was quoting Draupati. Ashutthama. Ashut, uh, attitude towards Ashutthama by Arjuna. Attitude by, uh, on Ashutthama by Draupati. So he did not see, they did not see him as a killer. Another time, they were able to raise themselves from a higher, higher, to a higher level. From the individual level, he is a killer, na? My mind will always label him as a killer. But when we raise ourselves to a higher level, the whole picture changes. We can accommodate them. He is my guru's son. Like that, you know, it comes. So, there is a testing ground. Daily life is an opportunity provided for us to exercise. When we go through this uh, uh, inquest of God, Papa is throwing himself out to the field. He was not sitting in the cave. He was not with a teacher. He was exposed to the entire Jagat. J just like Mahatmaji, he was in the midst of activities. He did not withdraw himself from anywhere. He went through everything, but at the same, because it was the testing ground. That is why it, it became his. We will again read, daily life is an opportunity provided for us to exercise the spiritual dimensions gained during our inner studies, reflection, japa, meditation. It is the testing ground so that each day our progress becomes really ours. We have made it our own by having tested it, proven it, possessed it. Until it has been tested and proven, it is not our own. It does not become part of us. Every spiritual step, sorry, every spiritual step forward becomes assimilated into our nature when it is thus exercised. Every spiritual step forward becomes assimilated into your nature when it is thus exercised. That which is exercised actively becomes firmly grounded, permanently and truly your own. Thus there is indispensable connection between your daily sadhana and your daily life. It's a very, very important point for all of us, devotees and sadhakas, you know which we could see in In Quest of God. That which is exercised actively becomes firmly grounded, permanently and truly your own. Thus there is indispensable connection between your daily sadhana and your daily life. It is in the context of daily life that you are able to actively exercise and test your spiritual progress. So the daily life is given to him, to given to us by him, only to test these, you know. Initially he gave us a long rope to have our own likes and dislikes, rights and wrongs, preferences, priorities and what not, ambitions, cravings, desires, preconceived notions. He gave us a long rope we were playing. But a stage came when he knew that it is going from bad to worse, he somehow brought us in touch with a Mahatma or an incident or any, any world soul in whom we developed respect and in whom we saw so many things that really touched us and we start turning towards him. Here again the point is, if we simply try to appreciate he is good, he is great, he is good, he is great, so what? So that is why he says, it is in this context, uh, the, the, there is an indispensable connection between your daily sadhana and your daily life. Whether it is family life, whether professional life or a social life. 
it is in the context of daily life that you are able to actively exercise and test your spiritual progress and unless this is given how do we know so he has to put us on test it is in the context of your daily sadhana that day by day the quality of your daily life is enhanced and enriched it becomes further elevated to progressively ever higher dimensions of culture refinement and a transformed spiritual nature so previously he said it is in the context of daily life that you are able to actively exercise and test your spiritual progress then he says it is in the context of your daily sadhana so sadhana it try enables me to improve the quality of my life and daily life provides me an opportunity to get it stamped you know it is in the context of your daily sadhana that day by day the quality of your daily life is enhanced enriched it becomes further elevated to progressively ever higher dimensions of culture refinement and a transformed spiritual nature so uh, swami ji is drawing our attention to this very salient aspect we we normally think this is separate this, uh, that is separate compartmentalized you know you people sitting in ashram can say that no but we are no doubt the challenges are too heavy duties are too heavy commitments are too heavy very difficult but still when swami ji says we will try you know god is providing all these challenges everything i was thinking that i am meeting with the challenges when god is providing me the challenges now i realize it is only to refine me to bring out the core content in me so if i start doing that even if i fail 100 times one time i may succeed you know so uh, daily life is an opportunity provided for us to exercise the spiritual dimensions gained during our inner studies reflection japa and meditation papa used to put in a simple word outer activity should be compatible with inner aspiration i am doing nama japa i am doing so much of japa every day i am attending this bhajan i have completed swadhyaya of so many texts so many so many we can say i have visited the hall the punya tirthas everything my mind can take credit off but have i been able to extract that which is essential to refine my life in my daily life in my family life in my professional life in my social life in my personal life so daily life is an opportunity provided for us to exercise the spiritual dimensions gained during our inner studies reflection japa and meditation it is the testing ground so that each day our progress is really ours we have made it our own by having tested it proven it possessed it until it has been tested and proven it is not our own it does not become part of us every spiritual step forward becomes assimilated into your nature when it is thus exercised that which is exercised actively becomes firmly grounded permanently and truly your own thus there is indispensable connection between your daily sadhana and your daily life so no field is taboo you know it is in the context of daily life that you are able to actively exercise and test your spiritual progress it is in the context of your daily sadhana the day by day the quality of your daily life is enhanced and enriched and it becomes further elevated to progressively ever higher dimensions of culture refinement and a transformed spiritual nature so before we close anything else nothing else 
before we close, I think we should have a quick recap. So morning we started with what? All are in static aspect. Come down to the dynamic level, please. All gone to samadhi, deep ah. samadhi. What was it? The first one we did. Let us try, you know. Good. As soon as we came here, Guru Stiti, Brahmanandam Paramasukadam, no? Good. Then, afterwards, No chur Venkat Raman. No chur ji. No chur Any points from that? We remember? Jnani is a real sanya. Jnanam. Jnanam is a Jnanam is a must. Okay. At least one point, that is enough. Then do, same people should not say. <laughs> what was the next one after the Ashir Vachan video? Manasa Vacha. Manasa Vacha Karmana. No? Manadal Vakal Shailal. No? It's a total, total, what do you call, surrender. I've been, and complain. We can complain. Uh, we have time for five minutes, you know. Yes, sir. We will, uh, we would try to share. Many of you would have heard through satsang, but for the sake of those who have not heard, we will repeat it again. Many, many, many years back, when we were in Vainar, <coughs> we had to go to Bangalore to discuss with a fertilizer company for the supply of Sufala fertilizer in Vainar area. We were working with a Jain who had the dealership, Mr. Menon. He was the regional manager. So we went, we thought, you know, we have to give a visiting guard. We don't have any visiting guard. And when we went to the office, to the regional manager's office, uh, the door is open. We went in. There was nobody to stop us. And one person was, we, we knew him very well. He had come to Vainart. So as soon as he saw, he got up from the seat, welcomed us. It was a, that itself was a great revelation for us. Normally, a regional manager of a fertilizer corporation of India, a government of India undertaking, you know, there will be a lot of protocols. There was nothing there. We discussed for what we went. Suddenly, we looked at his table. There was Satyasai Baba's photo. So we asked him, are you a Baba devotee? He said, yes. Then he asked us, have you gone to Puttaprati? No. Shall we go? Okay, we can go. Shall we go now? <laughs> Today. I said, okay. So we had to go to Jayanagar to get a couple of gloves. And then he said, I will also go to my lodge and come back. We will meet at Kalashi Palayam, the then bus stand. So both of us reached there by about 2.30. We got into a bus, reached Puttaparthi by evening, night. Somehow we were able to get a not an accommodation, I would say, in a, in a tea shop, we were allowed to sleep. We were given a mat. And then, then he said, early morning, four o'clock, is the, what is it called, Nagara Sankirtan. So we will all go and sit in, uh, before the, what is it, Prashantin Iliam. He said, okay. So we got up very early in the morning, had our bath, we joined in the uh, Prabhadabheri and then we sat. We went to the Prashantini Lep, sat there. In an oval shape, we stand. So we were, we were in the, here. This is the state. So many people are sitting. Behind me, this man was sitting. Everybody was silently sitting. Suddenly, this man started telling, why should we sit here? See his palace? Why should he have such a big building? I am not interested to see him. I am going. And started abusing Baba. 
uh, previously he said, uh, when he was in the previous mood, he asked, would you like to have an interview? We said, we don't need an interview. We just would like to touch his feet if possible. That's all. Beyond that, we have no other desire. So after that, this dialogue started. And he started at a left and right, you know, he was taking Baba. I am going. Are you coming? I said, I am not moving out until he comes. Baba came. Normally, he used to stop at many places. On that particular day, he came and stood before us. So we could do the uh, pranams. And as soon as we got up, this man suddenly, you know, <laughs> prostrated, caught hold of Baba's feet, literally washed his feet with his tears. Papa, Baba stood there for the whole event. On that day, Baba did not collect any letters or anything, and then he went back straight. Only appointment was this person. And as soon as he went, he said, in Malayalam, he said, Nallonan jeta varenam, apri aduthu verilu. Viroda bhakti. And it was a test on us, you know. We remember so such incidents, you know. So with bhakti can be in different forms. His deep-rooted bhakti, that I was wondering, it was he who told me about Prashadini Leam, it was he who motivated, it was he who took us, and he has been with us, and after coming and sitting here, he is talking all things that should not be talked according to us. Then, then we found, when we read uh, Chidanji Maharaj, daily life and daily sadhana, unless and until the field is given, how will we know? Today, he, this had happened in the 70s, but still it is fresh in our mind because the, the message he gave, you know, God gave us is something which we cannot forget at all. Don't think that there are certain things to be followed in this way or that way. I will choose any way to test you. Why did I remember this? I don't know. Anyway, it was good. So all these things are, uh, the, that means we should, we should be able to link it with our life. When Swamiji Maharaj says, daily life and daily sadhana, we should be able to link it with our life. This is what Papa did. did. And so we also try, you know, having heard all these things. And uh, we were trying to recollect, you know. Our recap was going on. Come on, guy. Oh. Uh, they were happy that you, they have for, you have forgotten. No, no, no. One, one word only. Swamiji, we, we don't want any explanation. Swamiji missed one big session in between. Eh? We directly went to bhajan. There was a big session in between. Mm. <laughs> we have all forgotten that. Okay. okay, then. Swamiji session, nobody said anything. Ramayana and Mahabharata. Ah, ah, then. Draupadi, Edar Gormir. When... Uh, Gurudev said that uh, you should be able to uh, forgive or forget insults. That is the biggest sadhana. That's when Swami... Samachittada, you know? Samachittada, equanimity, the word Swamiji used. I don't know whether you heard it. He, eh? Rama and Bharata splitting. Rama and Bharata. Ah, Rama and Bharata. Kaigeyi, you know? Kaigeyi. Ah. Um, Rama did not find fault with Kaigeyi. He wanted Bharata to revere his mother. So, the, okay, then, from there we move to what? Huh? Huh? Kakarlai. Kalindi, Kaliya, Kaliya. Ah, Kalindi, okay. The footsteps. footsteps. We are, yeah, there are so many footsteps, how are we to locate? We will be able to locate. Real devotees will be able to locate the footsteps. Ah, then. Then after Swamiji's talk, Bhajan by Revi. That we, uh, okay. Bhavani Shankara, Uma Maheshwara. Mm, yeah, then. Ajmer eh? Binati. Remember? Eh? 
places you remember first is first is mangalore starting point then sri rangam no sri rangam in between okay then madurai ha eh? madurai madurai rameshwaram rameshwaram and tadushwaram avachalra la avachalra le sir rameshwaram and tadushwaram rameshwaram Chidambaram, Madurai. Okay. Something you remember, no? Pinne, board kapparam. After board, what did we do? Very important prayer. Thy glory. Thy glory. Thy glory. And then? What are the points? Twenty cents. Anyone? Solitude. From the gen side. Go to the source. Go to the source. Great word. Very good. Then. Huh? Eh? You know. Subservience to God. Subservience to God. Yes. Then. Dialogue. Huh? Eh? Dialogue. 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 Daily dialogue with him. Then. Solitude, resorting to solitude. Okay, something is there, very good. Then? Then daily life and daily service. Eh? Be the period ever so small. Be the period ever so small, chant and meditate. Uh, connect yourself with him, okay. Mataji's talks on Nirgun Tattva, why? Ah, elaborate explanation about great void, the space, you know. Easy for us to understand. The space is eh, Mahashunya. Space cannot be divided. Space does not get increased. Space does not get decreased. Whatever we do in the space, it does not affect. A deplorable thing happens here. A noble thing happens here. But space is, remains untouched, unaffected. So many, so many dimensions are there. We never knew about it. But when Papa used the word uh, great void, it touched and made us to think more and more about it. And we made a little research. How, where from he goes? He has not uh, he repeated this word anywhere. Eh? Eh? Total darkness was there in the beginning, and then the effulgent light came. In the beginning, it was <coughs> totally dark. From there, it has come. <coughs> something, is, something has to emerge, means before that, what it was. <coughs> so a tree has come. Before that, what it was? This, the, the tree is in the, remains in the seed as well, in a very subtle form. Likewise, before this creation came into existence, it was, it is vector. It is known, it's a manifest reality. This uh, the manifest reality was there before as an unmanifest one. That is the great void, actually. We use the word great void. So in abjecta they call it. <coughs> this existence came from the non-existence one, the void one. Yes. So in different, different ways it is put in the, in the script, the operation. Chapter complete. So the anyway, so the uh, that will all el enable us to go deeper and deeper into our own source. So very very happy that so many points are there. Prob 
ആ ഡെയിലി സാധന ഡെയിലി ലൈഫ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ദ മോസ്റ്റ് ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് വൺ ഏഹ് ടുമോറോ സ്വാമിജി വീട്ടിൽ വെച്ചപ്പം ഏഹ് പപ്പ സ്റ്റോക്ക് വെരി ഗുഡ് വി ആൾ ഫർഗോട്ട് അബൌട്ട് ഇറ്റ് പപ്പ സ്റ്റോക്സ് ഓൺ സ്പിരിച്വാലിറ്റി so he 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 was telling the spirit spirit you know spirit and matter he put it so you know, in understandable way that what is spirituality what is god you know he put he talked to us and uh, yes that we forgot so every day uh, not on a lighter vein we will try for this recap because so that we will know something remains in us and later on god will definitely connect us up with whatever is needed some inputs it will come in some form so we will we, that mean this is how we consolidate our earnings otherwise you know it will be just hearing and going so we pray to uh, the indwelling reality who has prompted us to take up all these things who is facilitating everything to us to guide us properly and uh, lead us to himself hari om thank you all very much om shri ram jai ram jai jai ram ram